welcome uh, John as he comes and shares the word with us this morning. Stumbling blocks 
to the people. And Jesus said, you know, like these things you put up, they just, all it does is interferes people's, people reaching in to meet with God. Um, so it's, it's, there's quite a few things that stack up of why we do some of the things we do. But a really cool thing that Jesus said that I've had on my heart for a long time, and, and Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In verse 20, well, it's the gist of it. In verse 28, he reads, Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Not maybe, but I will give you rest. Amen. It's, Amen. Once again, it's, 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 not a, it's not a possibility or a possible outcome. If you seek him, you will get rest. Uh, verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. You know, quite often I find I, um, I was never a good reader, which was really quite good because I could read that slow that I bored myself to tears at times. But as I started getting better, the slowness of my reading actually helped, helped me to see and read what was actually there, not just roaring through so I could get to the next sentence. Um, and as we read it through in verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Not take my yoke upon me, upon, not take my yoke upon you and learn of me, and then on to the next sentence. But he says, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you, or and my one, <laughs> and ye shall find rest unto your soul. Once again, ye shall find rest unto your souls. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We must learn to rest in Jesus Christ. We must, or in Christ Jesus, we must learn to turn to him first and foremost. Not as a... As we grow, as we grow in Christ, we develop that relationship where I suppose I could, you could, um, you could associate it to any relationship, whether it be boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, or you know, two guys um, getting to know each other, or you've been known, had mates for for years, but. Um, You've just got to take time to get to know him. And as you get to know him more and more, you need to realise that Jesus is the first one you should go to. So often in life, things happen. And it's quite a long way down the track where we actually go, oh, actually. <laughs> and we need to just get it in our spirit so that the first thing we do is we ask Jesus to help. We say, Father, you know, what is going on here? We use the things that aren't going as we want them to be as signals to say something's not right. Let's get back on track. Um, we've, our, our life today has got so many um, substitutes and so many props and so many things where we can veer off. Um, you know, Jesus is the same today, yesterday as he was yesterday and as he will be tomorrow. Yesterday, today and tomorrow is the same. So we need to try and remember just in our walks that he is our first point of contact. Um, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Um, I don't know whether there's many here that uh, know at all of um, horses and that when they were, when you had a Oh, we had horses together. They were we used. They used to be yoked together. Quite often, we we think of the word being yoked as, as a negative thing. You know, you see these prisoners walking around, <laughs> arms like that, walking around, and they're yoked up and tied up, and and um, and even like you know being yoked with unbelievers. But with a yoke of horses, you've got. 
two, four, six horses all like all together, and they through the surcing, uh, the um, swing trees in the front and everything. The chains ran back, and the second lot were hooked up. And as they were walking along, or as they were working, if one side he got a bit of oil, and the other side he just dropped back. The chain would pull it right up. Whoop, yep. The chain would pull right up between it, and he, he, it was a nice feeling. The horse would get back in the line and start. And sometimes, with me as an example, pretty often, I feel the Lord has to give me a bit of a jerk every now and then because I've actually sort of just been, you know, tripping along smelling the daisies. Um, and but if we're in with Him, if we are yoked with Him. Then you know, and it's with the Lord. It's a gentle nudge. It's, it's, it's not the whip. It's a, the Lord never uses a whip. He doesn't use a piece of four by two. Uh, God encourages us gently. He talks about like us being like um, chicks underneath the hen's wings. You know, that's that's a thing of love and protection. You know, He's not there to to boot us into gear. He's there to nurture us. And in that, with the yoke of horses. Um, it is taken, the, the weight's taken evenly and it's taken light. And as in Christ, your yoke is easy. Um, and how do I know that? Because he says that my yoke is easy. That's why. It is written. A little summary of that with a belief and unbelief is the having and not having. Um, we've had was touched on to this morning. Um, there's so many different examples in Jesus' ministry with, um, with the woman that uh, touched the hem of Jesus' garment. She believed that if only I can get close enough to touch his garment, I will be healed. She believed that if only she could. The one um, with the father who brought the son and asked Jesus that he would heal him. And he was, he was called lunatic. And he would even at times be thrown into the fire and get burnt and all sorts of things. And, and Jesus said to him, um, I actually I need to find the scripture, I forgot to find it. But it talked about, um, Jesus said to him basically, he said, you know, do you, do you think I can do it or what do you want of me? And the father said, I believe. Then he turned around and he said, but Lord, help me, Master, help me in my unbelief. Isn't it cool that even, we can even ask God when times are really hard. And we, there are times when our faith is weak. But do you know, in that time, we can actually even ask God to help us in our unbelief. Amen. You know, we don't have to, there's, there's no... We've seen the Olympics, you know, and you've got to get the highest height to get the gold, the second highest to get the silver, and the third highest to get the bronze, and the rest of them are the also rands. Each and every one of us, through Christ, is called to rule and reign with Christ. Each one of us. Nobody's counted out because they aren't any good at high jump. Well, they can't get over that line first. Um, and I'm not diminishing the fact that um, first is first and it's really good to compete and everything like that. That's cold. What I'm talking about in Christ is that we are all winners. Amen. We're all winners. Um, we, there's, in fact, it is up to us. The same, with, the same with the Olympics. It is up to us. We have to put our faith forward. We have to get out there. I suppose you could get all there. Um, Theological and everything like that. You could probably call some as the so also rams. But it's not by our ability, it's by our. It's not by our physical ability. It's by our ability to expose our will and our spirit to God. <coughs> All we've got to do is believe. Um, let the weak say, I am strong. You know, at the we just need to learn that the key is to rest on Him. The key is to make contact with Him and let Him do it for us. Amen. We are not mighty men and women of God. Jesus is awesome. He has won the battle. He has done it all for us. And so we are mighty men and women of God. Amen. It's, we, we just got to stand on the finished work. The finished work of Calvary. 
It was interesting what Pastor Hesha said this morning about the uh, about looking up, you know, about out here, you know, and I was thinking, just as she said, I was thinking, you know, that was Jesus on the cross, but that was Christ risen. Yeah. And that is so cool, it just, it just all of a sudden mm -hmm. come across my mind, I thought, you know, that's, we, we see Christ risen, the job is done, once and for all. Yes. No need to be rehashed, it's already been done. Mm -hmm. Um... Casting down, we've got here, um, let me see, we're going to get to Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In Corinthians 2, verse 10 to 35, we'll quickly read that. Verses, uh, yeah, verses three to three to five. For through, oh, sorry. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts it, exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Um, that's our job. That's the bit we do. Casting down of imaginations. Allowing the Holy Spirit to control and to direct our thoughts. To rest in some entering into his rest in Hebrews 4.10. For he that is entered into his rest... He also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. More of him and less of us. Yes. Um, isn't it interesting that uh, it says there, as we cease from our own works, even as God did on the Sabbath, on the seventh day, he rested from his works. Um, and that's what we need to learn to do is we need to learn to cease from our own words. More of them and less of us. If things are gotten to get on top of you, it's possible that you've got the shovel in your hand and <laughs> throw the dirt up yourself. <laughs> Put the shovel down, let God do the digging, because he'll know where to throw the dirt. <laughs> um, <coughs> Hebrews 4, 16, Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Finding grace and entering boldly into his rest. For me, that time started when I, basically when I realised that um, I was, as it says up on the wall, I turned it around a little bit, but it says that... Um, <coughs> I knew beyond all doubt that I am greatly blessed, deeply loved, and highly favoured. Live or die, I am in his favour. I know that I am his and he is mine. Washed, pressed together, and overflowing with his grace and mercy. And none of it being my doing. None of it being my doing. And receiving it freely. And as we freely, freely receive, so we freely give. And the other way, and as we freely receive, we freely, freely give. Give more than you receive. Um, but you know, the, the cool thing is, is coming to that point, A, where you realise that it's actually not you, when you actually manage to get yourself out of the way and let God bless you. Let Him do it His way. Let Him have His way. And believe you me, age is no different whether you're young or whether you're old. I think the really interesting thing I heard quite a few years ago, they reckon that from around about the mid-30s, they reckon that the actual rate of conversions of people finding Christ from their mid-30s on really just drops off because we get stuck in our old ways. A little bit like going back what I was mentioned earlier about sometimes just for that, the culture that we grow up in. And we get more and more hardened. We get hardened of heart. And Jesus said to the disciples, he said, lest you become 
as one of these little children who are not entering into the kingdom of God. Because we put walls up and we put barriers up and we put all sorts of things up. And we do that in all fields, not just in salvation, but we do that in our walk as well. That still small voice can only be heard if you're listening. It was a little bit like the um, the one woman about uh, with Elijah, with a, it wasn't the roaring of the wind and it wasn't the fire, uh, it wasn't the whirlwind, it wasn't the fire that was burning the bush, it was the still small voice. It was the still small voice. That's what we've got to tune ourselves to. We've got to hear God. And to do that, we've got to back off ourselves and let him sit down and be quiet. I've been told that many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> my mother just and one thing um, I had a beautiful mother um, and she was saved most of her life thanks to her grandmother um, who was also a beautiful woman in Christ and the one thing with mum was she was a, she was a real prayer warrior there was seven of us kids and Nothing happened to any of our family whatsoever without mum interceding and going to God for it. <laughs> I mean, when you were growing up, we used to, we used to call the Lord out of the Lord. <laughs> and she did, she had quite long arms. It didn't matter where you were sitting around the dinner table, she was able to reach with that butterfly <laughs> and smack your knuckles if you needed it. It was pretty cool. <laughs> well, it was when you was little, but it was really interesting. But, you know, mum knew, she knew how to reach out to God. Um, she knew to go into her prayer closet. And, and when she died, mum, one of my older sisters, Lucy, she, uh, she just said to me, she said, uh, I don't know when it was funeral or whatever, she said, you know, she said, someone's got to pick that family up. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she did. She said, somebody's got to be the prayer warrior for that family. And, it's really neat, like we had a big family and it was really cool, but you know, we are all part of that big family. This fellowship here is part of my family. And as a prayer warrior, we need to extend our prayers, not just to our little huddle, but out to the whole chook farm. <laughs> not just the chicks under your wings. But um, just a little story. About mum, she was uh, she was knee high to a grasshopper herself. She was only little, but she had a real tenacity. She was born with a a um, oh a deformity, or you would say she didn't have a bone, she didn't have a hip joint, and um, she didn't walk until she was about three and a half or so. And but you know the tenacity in that girl, <laughs> she wouldn't be held back by no one for nothing, and. Um, she, I remember she came up from the cow shed one night um, after milking and at the back door there was a big concrete step and as she came around the corner there was this massive rat on the top step. <laughs> that rat made a big mistake <laughs> because no one got between mum and her hands and that was it, it was the same with the family. And, uh, she took one step down and there was a rail and on the bottom of the rail there we had this massive big um, it was a draft horse shoe, and it was a real big one. Well, she grabbed that thing and she dealt to that rat. He was standing up on his back legs, this and that, and it was the size of a small cat, I ain't mad. But she just went in and nobody was going to get in her way. But why I mention that is that that was her tenacity with God as well. She pushed, she pushed in, and she claimed every one of us was, and, um, and she's done a really good job. And, uh, you know, so I just want to explain that a little bit for all of us to have that boldness, to have that boldness to push in. Don't let anything stop you from pushing in for what God has got for us. I've got a few other scriptures here, but the, the bottom line is, is that Jesus did it. He did it once and for all in Hebrews 10, 9 to 10. And to take my yoke, as in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So basically, 
I think, you know, we um, we just need to take in here, I've just written at the bottom here, enter into his rest boldly. It is yours to take with open arms. Don't hold back. It is what he wants for you. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. How cool is that with what we heard this morning? <laughs> You know, we have been called sons and daughters of God. So, and that's, we just haven't been called it. That's what we are. He's called us that because we are. Amen. So really, I just, um, on that note, I just really want to emphasize that last two bits there. It's just that we only believe. You know, it is not a hard thing that we have been asked to do. We've just been asked to believe. Let the rest just grow. Mm -hmm. There's this other people around who've got different ideas and different versions and what paces you should travel at. But you know, God knows each and every one of us individually. Before the foundations of the earth were laid on you. He's known us for quite a while. Um, we're not new on his radar. All he wants us to do is be close, right next to him. He wants us to be with him. And uh, that we be risen with Christ. So only believe and enter into his rest. Um, now I know there's, there's, there's always a lot of things that, that stop all of us from doing what we want to. And sometimes there's things that just stop us from uh, doing what we should do. You know, God is here this morning. I, it was a privilege of being able to be up with the singers this morning. You know, to bring praise and worship to God. The feeling up there is just, it is, the presence of God is just so awesome. We, we are so blessed. And um, and I'd just really like to, uh, I'd just really like to ask anyone this morning, if you have got anything at all that you feel is holding you back from pushing in, just believe there is nothing that is impossible for God. There, there is just, there, there is nothing that God cannot do. Um, if you knew me about 40 years ago, you would think I was pretty written off. Um, <laughs> and I probably thought I was as well, but you know, um, God never gives up on anybody for anything. There is nothing that we can do that can prevent us from coming into His love. And if there's anyone here today who has anything that has been holding them back, we heard the word that Pastor Dan brought this morning, the word that God brought for you this morning. It's all there for you. You've just got to come up and claim it. You've got to take it. It's like having a check for a million dollars. We've all been given one. But you know, until we cash it in, it's worth nothing. No one need to give you money for the piece of paper it's written on. But when you cash it in, nothing is impossible for God. Absolutely nothing. I don't want to see anybody go out of here today who has got dreams on their hearts, who have had visions put on their heart, and they haven't moved with it. They've felt, no, no, because you know the longer you put it off, the more it is, no, 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 it's too late now, because it was too late before, it's too late now. It is never too late. It is never too late. God has got work for us for eternity. This little minion of time here is just nothing. So if there's anyone here that wants prayer, I'm more than happy. We have a team here who can pray. I'm more than happy to pray for you. There's something that you have not done. You just boldly go in and claim it as a sure stand. Floors open. Someone would like to come forward, come forward. Otherwise, we do have a nice cup of tea and something to eat out of bag. But if there's anyone here this morning, just like you to close your eyes for a minute. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for the truth of your word. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, that we truly are blessed. We truly are favoured. And we really deeply are loved. Father, I pray that uh, 
if there is anyone here that feels that they are not worthy of your love, or not worthy of what you put on their hearts, let them know this day that that is not true. Anything that you give us is ours to have. We are joint heirs in Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word, Father. Let it not return unto you, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' precious name.